How's it going, everybody? Tokyo Game Show is going on right now, so we have a plethora of updates on Japanese games. If you're not into Japanese games, you could probably click off this video. However, we do have an update on one of my more anticipated 2024 titles being published by Sony as well. We'll talk about that, but a lot of exciting Japanese games on the horizon. We've got Blue Protocol, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Sword Art Online, at Last Recollection is getting a demo, Legend of Heroes updates, which... You know, that's a franchise that deserves a lot more love. We'll talk Helldivers 2, and Apollo Justice Ace Attorney Trilogy has a release date, so we'll talk that at the end of this video. But first of all, Blue Protocol, the upcoming anime free-to-play online action RPG from Bandai Namco, will be released this winter in Japan. Now, the global version is due out sometime in 2024, but... We should get a lot of gameplay and updates uh, of the game later this year when the Japanese release happens. This is uh, being developed by Bandai Namco Online. Amazon actually has a hand in publishing the game as well, so that's pretty interesting. Featuring a dynamic action combat system, deep character customization, and an epic story set in a vast world, Blue Protocol is an online action RPG where you become the hero of your very own anime adventure. The visual style definitely gives me a bit of a vibe of Grand Blue Fantasy Relink as well. Um, I like the look. I know, you know, if you're into anime, you're probably gonna like the visual style. You're on a quest to uncover the truth about your origins. On your travels, you meet people from many worlds and make new friends with who you share your adventures. Eventually, you find yourself facing an inescapable destiny as well. Action-packed combat. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner or an advanced player. The action-based combat system features simple controls that are customizable and able to match any playstyle. Deep customization. Become your ideal self. Choose your facial appearance, hairstyle, clothes, accessories, weapons and mounts for a combination that's uniquely your personal style and multiplayer adventure throughout work together as a team with other players to tackle quests, fight boss battles, and engage in massive online raids against towering monsters. So Blue Protocol again, winner release in Japan for the game on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series, and PC. That release will be happening in 2024 globally, and the PC version has been out in Japan going back to June, but this PlayStation 5 and Xbox release will be happening sometime later this year. Again, one of those uh, MMORPGs. I'm actually interested to see how it turns out because, uh, you know, with the anime aesthetic, I think it will have a heightened level of interest, especially with Bandai Namco at the helm. Uh, that'll definitely cultivate at least some initial interest with the presentation and the aesthetics of the game, but that'll be out later this year in Japan, 2024 for the Western release. All right, moving on from that, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth seems to have been the star of Tokyo Game Show. So many updates, a gameplay demo has dropped as well. A lot of lucky folks over there got to play the game, and we have a lot of updates for the game as far as new gameplay, and as well, we have a focus on mini games that'll be playable in the grasslands uh, of the game. The grasslands Mini game trailer showcases a number of side activities, including the house Queen's Blood card game, uh, Chocobo customization at the Chocobo Ranch, and a piano rhythm game and more. During the stage event, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, director Naoki Hamaguchi detailed the content players will come to across in the Grasslands area, which serves as the setting to the story's opening. The Grasslands area alone is a vast map, and also... The idea of the game is a one-to-one -one recreation of the world map in Final Fantasy VII, which is relatively large, and, um, you know, actually making a one-to-one -one recreation of the entirety of the world map is pretty sizable, but you're talking about, you know, you're taking a 1997 game that was on the PlayStation 1 to a PlayStation 5 game that is gonna be split across three titles. Like, yeah, honestly, I kinda expect something like that. Like, what else is it gonna be? And this is a large game, and, um, you know, it's gonna be a vast, vast experience. Um, you know, it is crazy to think about uh that this is the opening stages of the real final fantasy 7 story like i think a lot of people their first exposure to ff7 was through the ff7 remake because how many people are going back and playing a playstation 1 game there's a lot of people that have never played final fantasy 7 the original but are huge fans of uh final fantasy 7 because of the characters because of the remake and whatnot and i find that fascinating and hey that's great that's the idea of this remake to not only captivate the existing audience but introduce this game to a new audience that, let's be real, there's a sizable amount of people that aren't going to go back and play a PS1 game, but now you're really getting into the bulk and the meat of the Final Fantasy VII story. So if you thought Remake was great, boy, oh boy, that was the tip of the iceberg. Take it from somebody that's doing a replay of the original Final Fantasy VII right now. Uh, the last time I did an entire playthrough of FF7 was back in 2013, so a decade ago. And, um, you know, obviously I don't remember everything, but it's so humorous to me 
to see how quickly I finished the section that's represented in the FF7 remake and I was a little bit taken aback. I was like, wow, they really expanded the whole game and it'll be fascinating to see how much they do of Rebirth. I'm like one of the crazy ones before Rebirth comes out. I'm going to do a replay of the original Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core Reunion and Final Fantasy VII Remake. So like, yeah, maybe I won't get through all that. That's a lot to do come February and, you know, with a billion other games coming out. That, that'll be a sizable undertaking. But I, I've been talking to a lot of people that are super excited about Rebirth and they've got like the same game plan where they're either replaying the remake, they're replaying the original, they're doing Crisis Core, etc, etc. I don't think a lot of people are doing all three, but like, yeah, leave it up to me to be absolutely insane. Nevertheless, that is dropping on February 29th. By the way, if you are getting a physical copy of the game, highly, highly recommend you go the Best Buy route. Best Buy, just like with Crisis Core, is offering a pre-order bonus of a Steelbook. Last I checked, that Crisis Core Steelbook is going for like $50 alone, and that's just a pre-order bonus. That includes the Deluxe Edition where you get a, a steel book just for, um, you know, buying the deluxe edition. The steel book that Best Buy is offering with pre-orders is the same as the cover art, but you take out uh, Cloud and Zack out of the cover art and you replace them with Tifa and Aerith, Sephiroth still in the middle. So uh, I think that steel book's gonna be worth a pretty penny. So if you're gonna pre-order a physical copy of the game, highly, highly recommend you go the Best Buy route. Like, why wouldn't you wanna have just a pre-order bonus of a steelbook. GameStop, I think, is offering, like, a controller skin, and I think Amazon is doing, like, a hat or something, but, yeah, bro, go the steelbook route. That's gonna be worth the most, so, yeah, that's my two cents on that. Moving on from that, Sword Art Online Last Recollection will be getting a demo launching on September 26th. They dropped the opening animation and new playable characters. You guys know me, I'm not the biggest SAO fan, but like I will concede it's one of the most popular anime on the planet for reasons I cannot understand. Look, I thought the first three to five episodes of SAO were like really, really compelling, and then it just like fell off an absolute cliff. Um, but those three to five episodes, those first three to five episodes I thought were really good. I feel like Log Horizon is the anime that, you know, if you want to go the isekai route, like, is that the best one? I'm not that big of an anime watcher these days, but I remember Log Horizon being pretty good. But uh, SAO Last Recollection is the culmination of the Sword Art Online game series. It features the largest roster of SAO characters, and it goes through the War of the Underworld anime arc, which I've actually heard is pretty decent. A new story unfolds with tough challenges that await the beloved hero of Kirito, who... You know, you know what? If you guys are Kirito fans, knock yourself out. I ain't gonna go on this tangent about SAO, but whatever. A demo is available. And you know what? I actually did enjoy the Gun Gale Online uh, SAO game. I think Gun Gale Online is like a good gimmick atta to attach to a video game. So I enjoyed that game. Obviously, is it like a big budget JRPG? No, but did I have some fun with it? Absolutely. Last Recollection drops October 5th, but a demo on September the 26th. All right, here, here's what I'm very excited for. Legends of Heroes. Heroes, Trails of Cold Steel 3 and 4 coming to PS5 in early 2024. There will be a 2-in-1 pack at retail. So you'll get both games, uh, and NIS's uh, store page does have a uh, special edition that is available. This is uh, both titles, and you get a bunch of bonuses. $100, which honestly isn't that bad, given that you get both games, you get a bunch of bonuses. It looks like an art book, um, the Chronicles of the Twilight, a outer box. It looks pretty solid. Uh, let, let's go over everything. So you get... Uh, both games, you get a digital soundtrack, which I'm eh, not a big fan of that. Mini art book, you get a hardcover art book as well. You get uh, Atlas of Arabonia cloth map, Arabonian landmarks postcard set, Divine Knights and Awakeners art card, and a collector's box. All that for $100. Um, it's unfortunate that if you do want to get physical copies of Cold Steel 1 and 2 on PS4, you gotta like sell an arm and a leg to get those. It's really a bummer that that ended up happening and those are out of print, but what can you do? I think they had a different publisher for those games. Um, but yeah, Cold Steel 3 and 4 are great. Uh, obviously, play Cold Steel 1 and 2. Most people would say play through the Sky Trilogy, play through the Crossbell arc, and then play through the Cold Steel games. I think if you jump right into the Cold Steel games, y you'll enjoy them as well without playing the Crossbell arc or the Sky Trilogy. Some people might hold me at gunpoint for that opinion, so I'm sorry if that upsets you. But uh, yeah, certainly you don't want to jump into Cold Steel 3 and 4. And honestly speaking, Cold Steel 3 and 4 do have some narrative decisions that... Um, you know, I'm not gonna say upset people, but questionable. I can understand why people felt a certain way. Like, Legend of Heroes is an expansive, expansive JRPG franchise that 
you're not gonna hit a home run every single time but man oh man the consistency in these games are pretty damn good and the way they do the world building is pretty phenomenal so from that standpoint i think the games are great it's just i also understand like we're talking about final fantasy 7 being a massive undertaking with it being three massive games by the end of it you know with the trilogy Legend of Heroes is a different ball game when you have, you know, multiple 80 to 100 hour JRPGs. Like, if you're trying to play everything, Sky Trilogy is three games, Crossbell Arc is two games, Cold Steel is four games, and then we had Legend of Heroes Trails into Reverie earlier this year. That's another game, and next year, we'll be starting a new arc with the Legend of Heroes Trails through Daybreak coming up less in summer of 2024 for PS5, PS4, Switch, and PC. Now, this has been available in Japan. Obviously, the Legend of Heroes games need to go through the translation process, and that's a insane time-consuming process the game initially launched back in 2021 in japan and finally will be making its way over here stateside this is a new arc for legend of heroes but once again i would recommend you to play um the existing titles but yeah this will be a brand new cast of characters i am not familiar with the daybreak story i have not spoiled myself or anything with that so like i can't really speak on that but um yeah it'll be nice to start a new arc uh with legend of heroes with trails through daybreak a couple of final things to note. Helldivers 2 digital pre-orders are available right now. This is a game that I think timing-wise is going to be a disaster because it's coming out February the 8th. Persona 3 Reload, Yakuza uh, Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth is coming out, Tekken 8, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth a few weeks later, Persona 3 Reload, Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, that is just off the top of my head, Helldivers 2, um, I think will offer a unique experience, but I also think it's a really good idea that PlayStation is dropping this on PC day and date with the console release. Hopefully, that'll expand how many people are going to check the game out. Very much co-op focused, the lift up from Helldivers 1, which I thought was a really solid co-op game. Still has the quirkiness, the zaniness to it, but uh, $39.99 for the price point. There is a Super Citizen Edition. The Super Citizen Edition doesn't seem like anything crazy, um, just seems to be like in-game items and stuff like that pre-purchase bonus of some other armor sets um thankfully they aren't doing the early access gimmicks so fingers crossed playstation has still not jumped on that gravy train i feel like it's only a matter of time but uh nevertheless that'll be dropping on february 8th and pre-orders are live right now and lastly do want to note apollo justice ace attorney trilogy will be launching on january the 25th so this is the apollo justice set of games you'll get all three apollo justice ace attorney phoenix Wright ace attorney dual destinies and phoenix Wright ace attorney spirit of justice visual novel investigation style games quite good go play the phoenix Wright trilogy that's available right now Usually that's on sale for sub $10, and uh, I imagine this is going to be $39.99 to have parity with the other releases, but sometimes you don't know about these things and game prices are going up, so we'll see how that ultimately turns out. But that is going to do it for me. Again, a lot of updates coming out of Tokyo Game Show. Blue Protocol, massive free anime online RPG. That'll be coming in 2024, uh, winter release for consoles in Japan later this year. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth gets a ton of new information. Game looks great. It's going to be a sizable undertaking. Remember, 35 to 40 hours is what you'd peg for the main story. The 100-hour number that's going around, that's for a completionist run. How many of you guys are going to do an entire completionist run? I don't know. But, um, yeah, just keep that in mind. Sword Art Online, last recollection, getting a demo on September the 26th. Legend of Heroes, Trails of Cold Steel 3 and 4 coming to PS5 in early 2024. Trails through Daybreak, a new arc for the Legend of Heroes series, will be kicking off summer of 2024. Helldivers 2, digital pre-orders live right now. That is a co-op-focused game that I highly recommend you to have on your radar looks like with pre-orders going live my dream of it being a playstation plus extra game goes up in smoke looks like that won't be happening but what can you do i still think it's a game you should have on your radar definitely don't need to be picking up that super citizen edition though base game for 39.99 shall suffice and apollo justice ace attorney trilogy drops on january 25th that is going to be doing it for me let me know all of your thoughts in the comment section down below sound off there thank you for watching and goodbye Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.